Ngana. Njo. Kali. Jibis. Njo. Papi Njo. I first moved into Arusha after my uh, wildlife studies, which took place in Kilimanjaro region. Primary school in the village, I went to Arusha for secondary school, and then I went to Kilimanjaro for advanced level in wildlife management college. For me, it was very stressful. First of all, I was not brought up in anything like a city, although Arusha is still not a big city, but for me, it was overwhelming. I was coming from this village where this ox cart and the life was good, but coming there with honkings, these tall buildings, it was my first time getting into the elevator, going up, and I, I think it was like a magic. <laughs> Unfortunately, I lost my father now about last 17 years ago. As a first son, in our culture, you have to actually wear your father's shoes. Mama, come on. So when I actually come to the village after my work, when I went for the trip for some time and I'm back in Arusha, I will look at my own house and do some few things there, my logistics as far as paperwork, etc. When I'm done, I just consider myself free coming to the village. I love the communal system of life. The way people work together, the way we care about one another in, in different ways, you know. And again, the second thing I love is that freedom of not, you know, you have, no, you have less fear of getting out of your home and walk wherever you go and do whatever you want to do. It, I don't do this easily in Arusha where you live, where I live now. Because you get out of the home, it's like you meet everybody, is a stranger, it's like somebody that you don't know. Even if it's a neighbor, you don't know them that much. They are not from your tribe. So I don't <laughs> consider that here at home in Karatu. So that's what one of the two things I love the most. So this is my village generally and that is the village office where the chairman of the village and each local government has its own chairman so they have their system of addressing their issues. Over there in front of me is the church where my father was serving as a pastor. One day my father was preaching in a church. He was married, you know, as a pastor. People are getting married, he marries them and he was giving example. Because most of the marriages back then didn't work very well. Some people got married just because they want to please their parents. So my father said, I've experienced this very much. Why are we limiting somebody from choosing whatever they want? And so he was saying, if the day comes my sons want to get married and he brings me the spotted hyena, that is his hyena. He'll get eaten, not me. So just give them blessing and don't complicate this thing. I have six brothers and sisters behind me and I of course supported them. Thank God two of the sisters are off my list now <laughs> because they are married. <laughs> Losing my father at that age, he was 53. We never thought, he was so hardworking. He was, he was very much a going person physically into farming. He will walk. Of course, when the missionaries first come, some of the very few pastors, the natives, uh, accepting religion and getting to participate as a, uh, doing this work, he was one of them from 1968. One of these days, he said, I'm not feeling good, I'm just feeling cold. And it happened that next day I came from Arusha and I was in the process for my training to go to South Africa because I got the opportunity working for Conservation Corporation Africa. So arriving here, bringing this news, I found him sitting, having a blanket. I said, what is it? I just came back from Bulgaria. I'm not feeling, I just feel cold. 
Next morning, it was getting worse. He was sweating, and so we took him to the Lutheran hospital. Something went wrong there, and his kidneys collapsed. Like that. And next, mo next morning, it was no more. So now we are talking about me taking over the responsibility because I have no more father. That was not an easy thing. And I think I looked at the world like the, 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 the something is not right. So I was very much serious. I think these things gave me like a wake up. You know, you have no time and no more backup because your father is not there. So I just, I just went on. And whatever I do, it, I do it to the maximum, to the level I can I can do to the best.